Hello. I'm in town in Barrow in Furness and I'm just down at doing a wee video around about here on my travels. So I'm travelling from my hometown of Dundee, city of Dundee in Scotland, and I'm heading to London and then going via stopping off via Barrow and Furness. So I'm just gonna have a look now. I'll get the tea uh, later on at the McDonald's there. Um, so yeah, just that's on my holidays from my work, my, my two weeks off from driving the buses in Dundee. If you know my channel, you'll probably know that I'm a bus driver and I like travelling around. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, spend the night here on route down to Wearing. To, to London. Got a few things I'm going to do on this little excursion, well, large excursion, <laughs> and away for a few days for this like. Uh, one of them's visiting the Perton Electronics, it's Mend at Mark. Uh, he fixes up old uh, electronic, electronic, electrical stereos, etc. I put an amplifier in there recently. And um, I'm going to ask them and he said it's okay to visit them, have a wee look at these watch, do a YouTube video on it as well. So, I'll show you where I am right now. So this is at the retail park here at Barrow in Furness, which is on the kind of like west coast of England. Um, it's not overly far, it's up, oh, up from Blackpool. Um, so. so over in the distance here is the BAE Systems Engineering System uh, company and that. It's the same company that done the electric drive motor for the Enviro 400 buses at BAE Systems uh, for the um, series hybrid double-decker buses that Dundee had for a while and they got one of them so I, know that, I don't know if that's a particular company uh, the actual factory where they were built but it was the electric drive motors that were used in the series hybrids for the diesel uh, diesel hybrid double-decker buses had BAE systems used for that particular part, and that company is BAE. So, right, I'm going to get inside the car. It's just a little bit cold. Yeah, it's just a little bit chilly out there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just spend the night here. Um, just have a wee look around in that. Uh, when I get down to London, well, on route to London. I'm going to stop off at Mendip Marks, Perton's Electronics and have a look at his uh, workshop. Um, when I get to London, I'm going to have a look around London as well. I'm going to drive around some of the schemes, just to have a look at the architecture and some of the, the areas of London that I've not been to before. And I'll record some video footage. Um, and on the way back from London, I'm going to stop off at Dudley Squat Farm, Jeremy Clarkson's farm, for uh, the Amazon Prime Clarkson's farm. Uh, series so the shop on his farm is called Diddly Squat so I'm going to go up uh, there on route back to here I'm going to spend another night here on route back home in a few days time so that's uh, Sunday the 12th from well Sunday Sunday to Saturday uh, and for March it's blooming cold there's a lot of snow lately well just recently uh, earlier this week, a lot of snow. Certainly up in Scotland, and when I was driving down here to England, there was snow, rem remnants of the snow in the field. Although it's got milder, hopefully it'll be a bit milder next week, tomorrow, like. Um, but, yeah, I come back via here on the route, because it's, it's a long drive to drive back from London to Dundee. It's about nearly 500 miles, over 500 miles. Especially if I'm going via. Classage farm that's going to add a few, uh, and coming here as well. It's about 600 miles all around and going via the farm and Classage farm and then coming off to stop here again at Barrow and Furnace and then spend the night and then head back to Dundee on Saturday. 
and it's the Saturday coming, so it's all six nights all together. So I've set, set off earlier in the day for Dundee. So anyway, I'll put the camera up on the dash and maybe get a, a wee bit of the view, um, just some of the, the, the view of the streets, the roads of Barrow and Furness, while I'm driving over towards Wainley Island. Right, so I'm just going to go for a wee drive from here to over towards Wainley Island. So, I don't know my way around here very well at all. I've only been here on a couple of occasions, and this is like third time. So, uh, so this is like the main turn set left, set A590 Hindpool Road. Then go right on the roundabout and take the second exit, North Road. I'll come back from the tea here later. That's the first time I've set foot in the McDonald's for nearly two, well, a year and a half. Since September 2021 was the last time I set foot in any McDonald's anywhere. And uh, first time since will be that one when I go in there for my tea later. And go right on the roundabout <laughs> and take the second exit, A590 North Road. The BAE system is to do with, uh, is it, I think it's ship propulsion or submarine propulsion After 300 system, yards, so, uh, go right on the roundabout and take the second exit, A590 Bridge so Approach. Dark. It's like 10 to 6. The clocks haven't gone forward yet. Um, so, it's way in the island, A590. A Go right on the roundabout and take the second no, exit. No, that's all I'm saying. There's a roundabout here, but there isn't a roundabout. There isn't a roundabout here. So, I find that odd. Ah, so I think what I'll do is I'll get to the... Uh, right to the... Um, After 300 yards, turn left, A590, promenade. Then, you have reached your destination. Uh, I might go right to the promenade though. Um, something I gotta check there. The best way to get there is... Turn left, then you have reached your destination. Uh, you have reached your destination. Yeah, but promenade. I want to get the promenade. I mean right to the water, the, the beach if you like, you know, the water edge. Okay, I'm trying to remember, I'm to turn that off because it's just diverting me back around in there. That just gets me in the rough area. I, want to, I should actually just put the pinpoint to where the water front is. Again, it's up that way somewhere because it's towards the coast. So, could be straight up here, eh? So this is on Wainley Island, we've just set off from, uh, uh, we just came across the bridge there. direction to get to the the waterfront because you get a good view but well, you know the day of the weather's it's getting late and it's no it's overcast but as usual the last two days well before I set off it was like blue skies up in Dundee it was anyway so it's a lot Ocean the road, that's what we want. Ah, right, this is it. Round Hill 
Let's just avoid it. Good to see that. Ah, so I hope you could. See, you're looking all that way towards the Isle of Man. So it's looking out over towards the, the west, the Isle of Man, and that's over that way. Ireland. So that's that. Okay, so I'm going to have just a wee look around. Well, just have a wee stretch and a wee look around to show the camera around. Castle House Hotel back there. I mean, I'm in, not staying in there like in the, the stay at the travel lodge. Yeah. Right, let's have a wee look outside. Quite breezy today. It's a bit cold as well. So I'm going to go in this phone box. This is an old. You don't see many phone boxes uh, these days. It's all mobile phones. So I'll just the beach crescent. There's certainly not the beach in weather today. That's the Castle House Hotel. So it is quite breezy. <laughs> uh, so we're getting back in the car and uh, yeah, this cold. Right, it's a bit warm in here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have a wee look at the bridge that I came over. So I'm just going to drive back, park near the bridge and get some footage of that for you as well. It'll be Wainley Bridge, I think it is. So oh, I'm just near that bridge again. I'm still on the Wainley Island side and behind me in that direction, just looking over in towards Barrow and Furness, and that's the BAE systems there. And you've got the sort of harbour. Um, that was the bridge I drove across. I've turned it around and I'll show you. So I'll just forbid and stand in. It's like a bit of a slipway picture as well. So I'll go and walk up nearer the towards the bridge and I'll show you on the bridge as well. Well we're not gonna get much on this side because the uh, walkway's closed but so, so look over here. building or some sort, an old shelter or something. Yeah, I think that's some kind of shelter, that old building there. Well, I'm going to get back into the car. I'm going to go and get the tea. Quite hungry. Uh, I'll do a bit of filming later on tonight. Right, so I'm just going to wait for a, to show you some of the streets in Barrow and Furness. Uh, right. The weather's not really that great, unfortunately, but it's just the way it is. I 
don't know the sat nav on this time. I've left the sat nav in there. I've got it set up. I've brought it here, but I've just not set it up, so I'm just going to wing it. Find my way into the centre. I haven't really got time to set it up. It's not really. I'll figure it out. I'll just see if we can wander. I'm going far anyway. Let's see if we've got a barrel in front of us. I'm not going to see much, but. Let's <laughs> see what that is. I can show you. Donald's. It's at the retail park. McDonald's at the Barrow and Furnace retail park. Please move forward to the next order point. Please move forward to the next order point. Hi, right, could I get a large tea, please? Anything else? That's all, thanks. Just one twenty-nine. Uh, take it, me. I can't really hear you either. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a, just the last three, yeah. yeah,
Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Please, cheers. This is not my usual McDonald's. <laughs> um, I'm not around. I'm not from around here, so the accents are sometimes difficult to to uh, understand the accents first time. You know, it's usually the other way around. The, the Scottish accents sometimes difficult to interpret. It's likewise, uh, sometimes hard. It's like uh, they're good into England and that. Well, where I am now, obviously, and I hand over Scottish notes. Not these places, but some places, a lot of them, they have a, sort of like a double take on it, but there's certainly, I've had an experience to go to some places where they, uh, you know, they're really quite reluctant to take Scottish notes. Um, I've had experiences with that, so I used to load my wallet up years ago, give me money, go to the bank before I set off in Scotland, and then, uh, Learned the lesson and said, well, What's the point? Because it's just, it's just going to be awkward. They're not going to um, be reluctant to accept it. Uh, it's like the language barrier sometimes is a bit tricky as, as well. Like, I'll just clean this car. I'm spilling milk. <laughs> uh, some blooming milk chassis in it. So it's been a long drive today. Uh, so the plan is to uh, set off tomorrow, head down to uh, Mendip Marks, Perton Electronics. I'm going to have a. Well, I asked him first, obviously, and he said it was fine for me to go down and meet him and do a like a YouTube video of his uh, workshop um, so I'll do that I look forward to that and after that I'm going to be going down to London spend the uh, four nights down in the peripheral it's actually on the motorway services because I wouldn't have fancied driving in the centre of London I'll be going into I'll be driving into London to the schemes and that some schemes I want to have a look at and certain things I want to look at um, I'll be doing that, like, and then we've um, got three whole days, or four nights, obviously we've got all day, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so one of these, the, on one of the full days I'll get probably the train or the tube or whatever right into the centre of London, about maybe the um, Westminster sort of areas, kind of. Some uh, came across some strange experiences. Um, it, was, it was like a video that I watched on YouTube. It was regarding uh, Dundee in the nineties, and I was watching the video. I was interested. I mean, I've been I've lived in Dundee all my life. Forty-seven years old so I've lived all my life in Dundee I know Dundee very well but on this video it was a historical video that showed a street um, in the centre of Dundee um, but I could name it I suppose it wouldn't really matter it's uh, Exchange Street and Castle Street 
in the video that was shown footage of it in 1994 it showed that street with um, a tarmac the road was tarmacked the thing is though that road has never been tarmacked never it's always been cobblestones that road's always been cobblestones so I find it really bizarre that a video from 1994 on these streets is showing those streets as uh, tarmacked tarmac road that's definitely not how it was. I mean, I worked, uh, I worked at one of Halfords in 1994, and um, I've got, I mean, I drove down that road. I was in a car that, uh, because wet cobbles are very, very slippy, I was in a car that, I was inside a car as a passenger that, Lost, yeah, I lost control slightly. Well, I lost control because of the um, wet cobbles. So I could really remember it for many reasons. That being one of the uh, a pinpoint reason that I'll, I could specifically remember that road, Exchange Street. I won't say when in '94, but it was in 1994. I won't say details of what happened, but I'll just say that the because of the wet cobbles, the car that I was a passenger of, um, was affected because of the weight cobbles, it wasn't a desired effect shall we say, so I always rem I remember that for that reason as well as other reasons, so I know for a fact that the Exchange Street in Dundee in 1994 was uh, cobbled and so was Castle Street because Castle Street leads to Exchange Street. So, I find that really bizarre. Very bizarre, I mean, the video footage, uh, it's historical. I spoke to people about it. The person that I spoke to remembers, or seems to remember that the road was, um, was they the, the, seem to remember the road being tarmacked. And then, the tarmac being removed and being put back to cobbles. Now, to me, I find that just bizarre. I mean, why would the tarmac a road over cobbles and then remove the tarmac to put it back to cobbles? They certainly never done that because if they did, it would have been upheaval. There would be a lot of money wasted and everything because of that. Uh, why would they spend all that time closing the road and all the money doing the road up and putting tarmac on both roads, Castle Street and Exchange Street? then taking the tarmac off again to put it back to cobbles. Why would they do that? It's a waste of time and money and the roads would be closed and causing nothing but delays. And, well, yeah, it would have caused congestion, it would be inconvenient, especially at businesses that are on the roads. And I would have been remembered, I would have remembered it. I was in the town and going to town a lot. And, well, I was working there in 1994, so... And I got by... Uh, my first car uh, around about that time and I remember parking my car on Exchange Street as well it was always cobbled so I've got plenty of reasons to remember Exchange Street being a cobbled road it still is today by the way Castle Street and Exchange Street to this day is still cobbled it's always been cobbled yet there's videos the video and various points in this video show it clearly tarmacked and then of course uh, spoke to people about it and someone I spoke to seems to remember it being tarmacked and then remember it, the tarmac being remo removed and being put back to uh, cobbles and I've been, I put it on um, Facebook as well, the clip it. It's odd because the comments, some of them seem to like miss the point, you know, and they go and maybe refer to other streets and roads when it's really focusing on this particular road that I'm talking about, two roads, mainly Exchange Street. I find it really odd anyway, it's bizarre, I mean, um, it was suggested that by one of the comments, me included, that it may be something to do with the Mandela effect. So, the Mandela effect is, well I can't say what it is, because I don't know what it is. I know what it's referred to online as the Mandela effect. 
But I'll be honest, I'll put my hands up and say, right, I have no idea, I haven't got a clue what's going on. I don't. But what I will tell you, and I'll be honest with you, I'll be honest, very honest, that I've experienced first-hand things that I could refer to online that res well, it certainly resemble something online that's referred to as the Mandela Effect phenomenon. I could, I could tell you that. I don't know if it is that, but I could certainly say what I've experienced would resemble it. The Mandela Effect phenomenon. I'll just leave it at that. It'd be easier for you to go online and do your own research or go wherever you feel it's valid to go to to do research on Mandela Effect if you're interested and uh, come to your own findings and conclusions regarding what's referred to online as a Mandela Effect. But I'll be honest, I haven't got a clue what it is. I don't know. There's plenty of theories. Oh, you can go online and get loads of theories on it. Um, there's lots of uh, material theories, well, material uh, so, uh, texts and stuff online, articles, um, you know, if you type Mandela Effect in, you know, that'll the Google search or whatever search engine, say Google, like, that'll come up with lots of uh, things. I mean, the X-Files, the, the um, American sci-fi TV show, X-Files, Mulder and Scully, Dave, David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. The later X-Files ones, the, uh, not the original series, but the later ones, they actually done a, an episode um, about the Mandela Effect. So it's widely known to a degree. Um, but I would say, I can't say, because I don't know if it's like these examples that are uh, Mandela Effects, if they all are from or caused by the same uh, source or caused by the same effect they could all and each of them be done by different or done differently you know to prove it and to research into it and go up and do the legwork i've done my own legwork and my own things um you know for my own reasons and and i just like to share to use you know that's all it could ever be to you because the videos can only just be a video to you whoever's watching it, just vice versa, you know, that's only just light and sound. You're only seeing an image of who you think that you're seeing, when you think you see me on it, well, that's artificial, I don't even see you on there, on the screen, other than if you're, you know, other than the device you're looking at in your hand, what the device is showing you, if you're looking at a well, yeah, device, it doesn't necessarily have to be in your hand, it could be a TV screen, but the device is only going to show you an image, and it'll produce a sound that your brain will interpret to be what it is, like you see me sitting in the car, you could probably see the McDonald's sign about, that's odd, that's odd, I point it, point it there then, eh? <laughs> you see this, you see uh, Barrow and Furness, retail park, um, you know, you only see what the images are showing you and your brain is then going to uh, um, build this idea in your mind that that's what it is like you show you that you say well it's a cup a cup of tea or a cup you don't know it's tea but it's a tea with three milks but I feel odd because um it's just bizarre really uh, it's something that you to try and explain these sort of things, like I'm trying to refer to it, is not really easy because I don't really have anything to grasp on to, to give you a solid uh, foundation to build, you know, to build an idea of what the Mandela Effect is. In other words, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain what the Mandela Effect is because A, I don't know what it is, but I do know what I've experienced and what I experience resembles something that's referred to online as the Mandela Effect. So the phenomenon, I know for a fact, I know what I feel. That's what I'm saying, I know what I feel. And uh, I'm sitting here, I know how I feel, I'm sitting with the, like, rubbish weather out there, it's, it's dry in here, so I can experience what I'm experiencing now, I'm sitting down drinking tea, I know what I'm feeling. So I could tell you that. But I can't tell you what actually 
what it is, if you know, it's difficult to explain. Like, if I was in a simulator, um, and then just a simulator, or experiencing what I believe to be a hot tea in my hand, my left hand, then to me, I'd believe it to be that. But I can't tell you, I can't tell anybody that that is what it is, other than what the five senses, the limitations of what I believe reality would be limited to. Like, well, because I feel it, it must maybe therefore be true that that's what it is. But it, what if it were uh, like a simulation that I'm only dreaming this, or, you know, this might not be real. What is reality? It's, we're trying to explain that and how the Mandela effect is good luck because I don't know where to start, but I could tell you what I feel. Like, I feel my left hand holding a hot cup of tea. I could experience that. So with the Mandela effect, I could have experienced things with the Mandela effect. Like, um, for example, like, well, I just gave you one about the streets. Although video footage could be only that. Video footage, it could, you could... Video footage can be altered. So, I'm not saying that that's what it is, because... But video footage is video footage. But, with things such as... Uh, other experiences I've experienced with, with, with material things first hand like areas, places that I've been to um, Backwater Dam Reservoir for example you won't know, well you may, you may not but I know what it is and where it is and what it was like and it was only just recently, I say recently I mean a few years ago that I went there on on another occasion, because I go there on occasions to chill out, to go walk around, it's a lovely part of the, the Angus countryside, it's Backwater Dam Reservoir, and I liked it there to chill out, have a look around, just to unwind, it's peaceful and quiet, well, me. I've been there many times before, and on this occasion, I went there, and there was a load of trees that were not there, that should have been there, that were always there before, but on this occasion I went there, they were never there. They, uh, they were not there. And I noticed it because the trees were blocking my access route up to the top of a hill. And I would, when I was there before, prior to that, when the trees were there, I would have liked to have went up that hill. I looked at the top because I was able to see the, the trees weren't yeah, they were at the foot of the hill. And that would, that would have prevented me and make it really hard for me to get through them to get up to the top of the hill. So, and I always wondered, I said, well, no, what's it like up there? But the trees were at the bottom and I never really went to the trouble to go through the trees to get to the... It's like a bit of a woodland area to get up to the summit of the hill. But on this occasion I went there and they were no longer there. And I was then able to get access right to the top of the summit. No bother because there's no trees, there's nothing that would prevent me doing that. And the woodland trees, I looked at the area, there was no evidence that any woods or trees ever been there. None. So. That's an experience that I could, you know, just experience myself. Uh, but the trees weren't there. And there were, I checked back on Google Maps, history and stuff like that. And on the, even on the maps there was no, any evidence or any sign of any trees. Like they were never there. So there's no way I would have not known that. Because when I first went to Backwater Dam Reservoir, one of the things I know for a fact that I would have done at that time is, on one of the, around about that time I would have definitely wanted to venture up that hill to see what was at the top, yeah, to, over the hill to, to the brow. It wasn't a steep, massive hill, but yeah, a steep hill, it wasn't a big, huge hill. It was one you could do in maybe, well I'd done it actually because when the trees were no longer there I went up, it was about half, 20 minutes to get up maybe, 25 minutes. Depending on your level of fitness. Uh, it wasn't overly high, but it was high enough. It would be, you know, I could do it because I do hill walking anyway. Um, so I would have done that much earlier, probably around about the time I first started going there, because I would have done that. I know I would have, because I was always looking at that dam and then driving towards the dam, along the top of the dam, there's a road that goes along the top, by the way, that goes to the farm. When I'm facing it, the, the hill's right in front of you, and I, would, I could see it every time. I drove along there and I was like always thinking what's above that, what would it be like up there? And the trees are always there to prevent it, you know, to make it really difficult, to stifle my uh, efforts to get up, it'd be hard. So for all the years I didn't do it because of that, because I wasn't really in the, you know, 
I wasn't going to take the effort, I wasn't worth it. But on this occasion a few years ago, recently, it was actually 2018 I think it was, 2017, 2018, there it was, that was five years ago, five, six years ago, five years ago. I say recent because in 47, and five years ago isn't, doesn't feel that long. Uh, and that's another thing by the way, time, it's actually, I feel time's sped up, but I'm not going to make that too long. Um, video will be too long. But the trees were uh, no longer there. It's like they never existed. So I looked and searched, I looked at the ground, there was absolutely no evidence of any woods or trees ever being there. And the time previous to that, it wasn't that long. It was probably a matter of a couple of months, maybe. And I was maybe on a regular, we went there at Batwater Dam on occasions throughout the years. So in a year I'd go there on occasions. <coughs> and I would have noticed if they were doing a project or an exercise to cut all the, the woods down, there'd be activity going on on, on the occasion that I would have clocked it. There would be no evidence left, there'd be tire trucks, there'd be truck, the cutters, there would have been stumps left. I've seen trees and woods cut down before and there's lots of evidence of it. But on this one, there was nothing. Nothing. In fact, the parts of the areas looked like they hadn't been touched by anything. So the ground had been like unaffected, and uh, it was like there was never any trees, there wasn't any tire marks or truck marks or anything like that. Logging activities. I wasn't a big woods, but it was a big enough woods that would require a lot of heavy machinery, a truck, and logging machines to um, to do that. And there wasn't any evidence of that. And as I say, I look back on Google Maps, the images at that particular area and there was no any trees shown on them and that's going back years so there's no way I would have missed that I couldn't because when you're driving along the dam it's right in front of you so that's what I mean by Mandela effect on the personal level the stuff I could experience there's tons of stuff online for examples you type in the Mandela effect and type in examples of, there's a list of there's tons hundreds of them lots of them some of them I could relate to, when I say relate to, some of them I could, you know. I feel as I've talked about this before, I have on the channel, so I don't know what to, but I just wanted to mention one of the later ones, uh, and then also just pointing out that I'd like to learn what it is, you know, I do. I like learning, I want to learn these things, it's fascinated in them, I really am. Oh. There's an interesting channel that I watch, um, that's... I find interesting anyway and um, you know it goes into a lot of detail regarding the Mandela effect as in stuff that's been that the channels claim to have done you know, into an in-depth view into it you know it's beyond it, it would take a bit of a, a lot of effort to um, uh, effort to do that you know, depend on your what you've got available to you and your knowledge. And I suppose to a degree, how much we've been, I would think, how much we've been suppressed. Because I think we can all learn it. We all learn it our own way, I believe. And I believe that we may be sub, uh, subjected to, to being suppressed on learning more than uh, than we should. I suppose you could say. Let's say, for example, if we knew how to do, if we knew how to, I don't, if we knew how to survive without money or energy, right? If we knew how to do that, if we could get by without money, if we could get by without stuff we need to depend on, uh, you know, what, what would that mean? So if we believe that we can't get by without it, like we're suppressed on. Uh, ex you know, being able to get by without it, if we're suppressed somehow to being locked into this belief that we can't get by without things, then you know, like, and I don't know, but what happens, like, if, if you know, I don't want to say anything, I know being up that, but it's like, well, the Mandela effect, um, I mean, I've experienced something I can't explain, I'll put it like that. So I went online years ago. I, I come across the name Phenomena back in 2016, 2017, later part of 2016. But before that, I knew there was stuff that was odd because I experienced stuff that I 
I didn't know the name term Mandela effect uh, before then, but I have experienced things that were bizarre that some of them did resemble the Mandela effect now, looking at it on retrospect. But when I say that, I can't say that as in that's what it was, because I don't know what caused it or what is causing it. Each and every one of these examples could be caused by a different cause, but they just all sort of mimic or resemble something it could be referred to as a, an overall uh, reference as a, as a Mandela effect. Uh, so, just... But... The video, anyway, it was uh, referring to Exchange Street in Dundee. I know if I could tell you right now, I've never saw Exchange Street or Castle Street with tarmac on it. I don't want to name the video in Pacific because um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just telling you in general terms. Um, I've told you the names of the streets, so you could easily, you'll know what I mean if you come across a video that shows. And I'm not discrediting the video in any way, shape, or form. I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that it's. Uh, I'm not discrediting or saying that, that it's been altered or anything like that. No, I'm not. I don't. I don't actually believe that it has. I, I, I think it's. I believe it's a genuine video. Hence why I find it really odd why it's shown. I'm kind of hoping it is. Well, it will be. I, I believe it is. So, um, but then that's all it could ever be with any video. Anyway. <laughs> any video is only through belief. It could only ever be that because if you're watching something from a video, then it could only ever be what you believe it to be. Because as I say, you I show you this cup of tea or a cup. It looks yellow, black, black and white. You know what the image you're seeing. You believe that to be. You may believe it to be a cup, a cup of tea at McDonald's. So that's only what you interpret what you're seeing on the device is showing you. It doesn't mean that that's what it is, but you can only just interpret that. It can never be true that you can't say 100% that that is a cup of tea because you're not there to actually experience it. You're only experiencing what your device is producing, which is the idea of some object that your brain will then say, that looks like a cup of tea. Your, your brain will look and say, that looks like a car back window uh, with the McDonald's sign through it. That looks like a seat. That, look, that person sitting there looks like, you know, who you remember me as being, which is my name. And it's only that. Just your mind will look at these objects, like, it'll make it, it'll make you think. What is that? You look at that, you think, magic tree air freshener, or little tree air freshener, cup of tea. But it, what you're actually looking at is just an image. So it's making the brain think that what it's actually seeing to be the real thing, when it isn't. All you're looking at is the this device that's producing the image. And the sound, all you're hearing is the actual mechanics, the vibrations of the, produced from the speaker. The speaker cone, that vibrates the air molecules. It sets up a, a frequency, a vibration, which your ear will pick up and decode as sound. But it's not my voice you're hearing. You're only hearing what the device is reproducing. And that is what you believe my voice to sound like. But it isn't first-hand experience. So it isn't the real thing. But you can, you would, you may um, give it the, you know, believe it to be the real thing. And it gets more increasingly dependent, you know, the people life depend on these things because they use cameras for mirrors, for like some vehicles are fitted with, uh, cameras, monitors instead of wing mirrors, for example. So you're actually depending, you're putting your life by trusting what you're seeing on the screen. Which can only just be, it's false, it's artificial, it's probably a better way of putting it. Everything you're seeing on there is, art, that's just an artificial image. And I, your, my voice that's playing through on your device is just an artificial sound of my voice. So everything you're looking at is artificial, it's not the real thing, it's artificial. So much so that people will depend on their life on it. When it's when it comes to driving, you use a, an artificial monitor instead of a, an actual glass mirror, a wing mirror that I could see in. You know, it's got to that stage where we've trusted it that much, we could trust it with our life. But it still doesn't mean that it's true. It's artificial, and the artificial can be manipulated. I mean, I could manipulate that image anyway, just by using software. I could do it. Uh, I've edited videos, I could, I could emit things from a picture, and that picture, 
you might see, uh, well, I could see the clock time at the top there. Um, there's things I might be able to omit. I could blank something out and superimpose an image on it. I could do that to a degree. I'm no expert at it. I'm just an amateur at it. I'm no expert. But because all the stuff on there, anybody that knows how to use the apps, that you get for nothing, could do it. I'm no expert on any of that stuff. But if I could do it, you know what I mean? You could do it, probably. But I'm no expert on a computer. So I don't know your level of expertise on a computer. I'm no expert on technology like computers. I'm not, because I haven't really spent the time or the effort uh, and wanting, and or, or most importantly, the desire to become an expert on them. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Not yet. I, I mean, I'd like to learn, and maybe when the time's right and I should, then I would, obviously. If I want to learn something and I need to do that to get there, then, and I'm really able to do it, then I would, if I had to, then I, I would try. I'd try as hard as I, my best, as much to the strength as I, that's equal to as much as I want to, to do it. So if you really want to do it, you would try as hard as you really want to, to as much as you really want it. But I've had other things to do in the time, and then fatigue sets in, you think, well, have I really got time? I mean, I didn't grow up with computers, so my, uh, at my age, the computers that I got at the school, back in the 80s, was the BBC computer, and I was crap at it, I just couldn't really, I was more interested, actually, on how it worked, I was, I was more curious, on looking inside it, what to see. I didn't really have the the uh, desire sitting, you know, on a keyboard. It just wasn't really me. I couldn't get into that at all. It's just crap. But I was interested to have a look inside it, to see the bottom of it, because I remember uh, an engineer came up. I was in primary six, in 1986, and it was a BBC computer, and there the, was a fault in one of them, and an engineer came up to repair it. And I, instead of doing the work, you know, the jars, I can't remember what it was, but I was looking over to see what was inside the keyboard, because the keyboard was the computer at that time. It's not like now, the keyboard's just a keyboard now, but back then, the BBC computer, the, the keyboard and the computer was all, or a lot of it anyway. You still had the separate bit as well, but there was a thick, a thicker keyboard, somewhere on the disk drive, like the Spectrum Plus 3, that sort of thing. There's different versions of the BBC, but this one had a bit of an angle. It was like that, and it came down at the front. But it was a thicker case, and it had the keyboard, and it had it was thicker. There was more in it, and it, I think that was where the, where the computer components were. But I remember looking, we took the bottom off it, and I remember looking in <laughs> and asking them questions or something. I was fascinated in it, like you know. But that inter interested me. But you know, I wish they'd actually um, went further with engineering. And, Physics was my favourite and strongest point at school, higher physics. So, I mean, I like to learn uh, things that I'm interested in. And one, as I said, one of the things I'm really fascinated in, I like to learn things that I'm fascinated in. Uh, we learn at different rates and we learn for different reasons and at different phases and we do things differently. We all do it differently. We learn at different points. We go about it differently. And, you know, that's why I do it. And, uh, and the Mandela effect, it's fascinating. I've always been fascinated in strange phenomena anyway, but the Mandela, the, the man, what's called online is the Mandela effect, the phenomena that re, resembles the Mandela effect. I'm fascinated in that phenomena that I've experienced. I always claim to have experienced it as well. As I say, you go online, type in the Mandela effect, you'll get tons of stuff on it. It seems, seems, it seems to be widely recognised. No, I can only see seem. But the the uh, BBC, I think it was X Files. That's on terrestrial TV, and there was an uh, an episode uh, with the Mandela effect. That was about the Mandela effect. It was 2019, I think it was. Mm. It was the later series of the X Files. So, but I was into the X Files anyway. But that doesn't make it biased, by the way. Just because I was into sci-fi since I was a kid, and, f and strange phenomena, because I experienced stuff back then as well. I didn't understand it, like, but I knew there was always something like because I've experienced stuff. I won't go out too much for this video. But, um, anyway, I just thought I'd have a wee blather ways here at uh, Marlon Furness. There is a channel, as I say, 
that's uh, that I find very interesting. That uh, you know, it's really goes into a lot of uh, seems to go into a lot of scientific depth as well on well, that kind of level. Even even above scientific, it goes right into you have to have a, quite a level of understanding. Um, I mean, I didn't go to uh, um, if like you were at higher university or stuff like that, and you talk about subject at a university level. Well, it's maybe like that in a way. The channel's at quite a high level in certain things. Now, not everybody is at the same level. We're all at different levels, and we are for good reason, I believe. I think that we're all at the level that we are at for good reason. We're supposed to be at the level that we're at. We learn at the rate that we're supposed to, but we learn at the rate that we're supposed to under the circumstances, maybe another way of putting it. So if we were, if, for example, if we were suppressed on how much we learned, then that's how much we would, that's how much we're supposed to learn, because there's been a suppression put there, so you're only going to expect it to learn so, so much. Like if you have a, uh, uh, if I put a hole in the bottom of this cup, right, it's going to drain out. If I put a small pin hole at the bottom of this cup, it's going to drain out slowly. So that's how fast it's supposed to, because it's going to be as, you know, as a physics, it's going to come out slowly, right? If I put a great big hole in it, it's going to, come, it's going to gush out a lot quicker, right? So it's supposed to do that. So if somebody's suppressed on how much they're supposed to learn, then they're going to only learn that amount. It's be, if I suppress the size of the hole, the water, uh, that comes at the bottom of the tea, at the bottom of the cup, is going, it's supposed to come out slowly, so that's how fast it's supposed to come out. So if someone's learning abilities are suppressed somehow, well for example, I don't know how, but there is, you can look online, there's techniques that they claim to be done, that could cause suppression, uh, maybe it was, you know, whatever. Um, just think if you, nah, if, just an example, not saying that, I don't know, because I don't know, I'm just saying for example, if somebody's, where, well, things affect minds. I mean, they say it's it's reported that if you take substances, it could affect your mind. If you're exposed to certain things that may not be visible, uh, they could affect your mind. Um, radiations are radiation is invisible. Uh, radi I'm just stating that radiation is invisible. Not all of them, because light is ultraviolet, and that's and light is uh, electromagnetic, and that's visible. But you get electromagnetic radiation that isn't visible. Electromagnetic, certain electromagnetic radiations could have effects on uh, could have effect on on us, I suppose. If you well, yeah, it does have a, it has a Electromagnetic radiation. Good. If you touch something that's well, sunlight, for example, uh, that's all violet, and you feel that, so it's got an effect on it. It makes you feel warm or hot. So things that you don't necessarily know or aware of could affect affect you. I will say that. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to. You know, just come up with wild accusations. No, I'm not. I'm just saying what is what's known and what could happen. You know, it's possible that, that, that it could happen. But anyway, uh, I think that's probably going to get me. Just, I mean, I couldn't just sit in the hotel all night, so. Oh, it's at 41 minutes, right? I'm going to have to go for now. Um, I will make more videos uh, throughout my wee holiday or excursion. Um, I'll put one up with the Perkins Electronics Mend at Mark. It's a, um, if you don't know that what Mend at Mark is, it's Mend at Mark is a YouTube channel, and it's done by Perkins Electronics. Um, Perkins Electronics restores old record players. Uh, I've seen them. I've seen lots of the videos. It's that's good. Um, I've asked them. Uh, if it's okay for me to come down and visit him and have a wee tour of his workshop, and he said, yeah, just let him know roughly what time I'll be there. 
So I'd like to be able to do that, get a video and show you that as well. Um, yeah. So, right, that'll probably do for the night then. Um, I'm going to be back here again on Friday, so if there's any other bits of barrel I could do, other bits of barrel furnace I want to show you, then I could do so. I'll be taking footage, as I say, of that, the Perkins Electronics um, workshop, uh, Mend at Mark's workshop. Uh, I'll also be going down to London, I'll be looking at things and places in London, I'll get footage of that, certain, certain footage for you. I'll be looking at things and some of which I could show you. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going down for other, like, I'm going down for my own reasons as well, but some of that I could get some videos for you while in there. Um, and then I'm going up, back up to here, on the way home and stopping off here again. And between London and here, I'm going to be going to uh, Clarkson's farm, Dudley Squat farm. <laughs> so that'll be fun, hopefully. Yeah, I've got videos of that as well and that. So, if you don't know what it is, it's going to Amazon Prime type it in. Jeremy Clarkson, uh, Top Gear presenter, no, an ex-Top Gear presenter, he does the Grand Tour now. Well, he's got his farm. He's done a series already, he's Clarkson farm, and he's, this is a second series. It's on at the moment at Amazon. But well, that's how much I've got. There. Anyway, it's maybe been made a while ago, but I've only just started watching it now. So, well, well, cousin down this way, I'm going to go up via that Clarkson farm. It's quite entertaining, actually, Clarkson. <laughs> I like his stuff, but I like cars. I was always a bit top gear, but, you know, Grand Tour, I like the cars anyway. But, uh, so I'm going to be doing that, and then back here again on the Friday, and then after that on the Saturday morning, or after I'll set off from here back home to Dundee. So it's six nights in total. Uh, right. It was sort of cold over there. Mm. It's not a very nice night though. It's just hope we get better weather for the remaining days. Like this is like the first night. So I just not. I don't know. Why I just sit in the hotel. I was just stopped up. I had things to do, but I was down here. Uh, so, uh, things I wanted to see. Um, just things that I feel I want to to do. I like travelling, I like looking around. But I'd share it with you. I'll be blur, I'll tell you what I'm doing in it. Right, I suppose I better go. Okay, I'll catch you later on, okay? Thanks, mate.